this is an experience being down in front of everyone here when we're usually in the choir. It's such a blessing to welcome each and every one to our morning worship service here, Bethlehem United Methodist Church. If you're visiting with us today, please take the opportunity to fill out a visitor's card and place in the offering plate during your tithe and offering. So glad to see my cousin Shay Yarbrough and his wife Becky with us again. Glad to have you and anyone else that's visiting as well. Uh, today, the flowers are given to the glory of God and placed in our sanctuary in memory of loved ones by Mr. and Ms. Harold McClam. We have announcements coming up this week. Our bulletin, Women's Bible Study, starts tonight. Uh, Lenten Lunch, is Wednesday, will be held here at the Atkinson Center. Also, Ash Service, Wednesday night. Please be conscious of all the activities and refer to them also in our bulletin. At this time, we'll turn to our choir for intro. If you would stand with us for our opening prayer in our congregation, you will read the bold print, and I will read the print that's not bold. Let us pray. Every morning, we climb from our slumber and head into our closets to begin the transformation. Sometimes stockings and heels or ties and jacket. We hide ourselves in the fabric this world through white lies, clenched smiles. We make peace and strife and hide ourselves in this world. At the end of each day, come to you. We cast our cares upon you. We share our burdens with each other and strip away our callous out ourselves, knowing you see through our dim disguises. Our heart and souls lay bare before you. God, manifest your presence here. Let your voice be heard in the silence of our spirits and the roaming in our ears. Let your substance and forgiveness, the warm breeze, your calm comfort and clarity to us. Your love fill us with joy so that our smile is bright. Your light gleam in our eyes, that others may see you in our hearts and in actions.
sinners. Good morning. Good, we're all here. You may be seated. And I just want to say a word of huge, huge, huge thanks uh, to Sandra for filling in for Jim. Uh, Jim is at home sick. Uh, he called about 7 o'clock this morning and was not doing very well at all. Uh, so we want to pray for speedy recovery for him. And we are grateful uh, that Sandra at the last minute was willing to play. Uh, and, uh, and we're thankful for Jake, who's going to lead the choir, and uh, just, he just kept all of us from falling apart, I especially. Um, so we've got a little bit of a different um, setup going here, so we hope that the worship service is still meaningful to you, uh, as those that have put uh, some heart and soul and quick thinking into the service. So I want to invite all of our children at this time to come forward for the children's lesson. First, I want to give you a little gift. I got these little posty notes that have some really fun and um, just some good words for you. And I want to, let's see. This one says, your smile lights up my day. There you go. Your smile lights up my day. You are so smart. Oh, here's a good one. I like this one. You are important to me. Alec, you are very clever. Gray, you are so caring. So anytime you need, and heck, well, since Mr. Jake is down here, we'll give him one. You make others happy. <laughs> So anytime you ever need something to make you feel good, you come and see me, and I'll give you a little post note that says something nice about you, okay? So I just wanted to share some good words for you. Now, Wednesday, we are going to have a special... Oh, come on down. Now, I don't need to tell you this because you already are, but I'll just give it to you anyway. This one says, be confident in who you are. <laughs> All right, now Wednesday, we have a special service called Ash Wednesday. Now that one sounds a little bit weird, doesn't it? It's the one day that you get to have dirt on your face and nobody says anything bad about it. They don't try to rub it off of you. And I just wanted to bring the ashes that we're going to use. And the ashes, it looks like dirt, but it's these are... These were burned palm branches from last Palm Sunday, and we've kept them all this time. And when we have the service, you'll come around, and I'll put my finger in there, and I'll draw a cross right on your forehead, and, and I'll say some words. And this Ash Wednesday reminds us that we belong to Jesus and that we need Jesus every single day. And just a little bit of information for all of you grown-ups is that Ash Wednesday goes back to about the 7th century, so it's not something that's been around for a super long time, but at least it's been around since the, the years were only th three numbers instead of four numbers. So it's been around for quite a while. So I, I, want you, I hope to see you at Ash Wednesday, and uh, if ever you see anybody with a little cross on their forehead, you'll know that they've been to an Ash Wednesday service. And... Um, so I hope to see you there. All right, let's pray. Jesus, we need you and we love you and we're thankful that you love us so much. Remind us every day how much we can trust in you, that you love us, that you take care of us every day. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All righty. Now, if ever you need a good, a good word, you come see me and I'll give you a fun post note, okay? All right, you ready to go? I guess, that's, I guess it's my turn. Yeah, that way works. Alto, alto. 
those come up? Oh, they're going up front.
just want to uh, say a few words about this past week uh, with the uh, general conference. I hope that you've received the email uh, that had the pastoral letter attached to it. Uh, I hope that you, if you were on social media, if you're friends with me, uh, or maybe others might have shared the video, it was the, the same letter uh, just read. And uh, I'm not going to read the, the whole letter. I just want to close, uh, have just this closing part uh, just to say that we are the church. Our church here is in a mission field of its own. Uh, this church has been standing for a long, long time. And tradition is rich. And tradition is sure. And it has carried us through thus far. We have gone thus far by faith. And we will continue to go by faith. Amen. Amen. So I just want to read this uh, last part here that our church is diverse in its opinions on the actions of the special session of the General Conference, and we must hold hands and hearts and love each other despite our differences and because of our diversity. And I want to commit to you to be present and to be your pastor to show love and compassion to all, regardless of your convictions or mine, because I know that we are all striving for faithfulness to God's word and God's will. So my challenge is, let's keep being the church. There is still much work to be done, and God is certainly present. And as, as I uh, wrote before, as we gain more information, uh, nothing is being done immediately because there's still some more um, bureaucracy, if you want to call it, that has to be carried out. Uh, and so once we know a little bit more, we will gather that information, we will get that information to you and have, maybe have some discussion times as we had before uh, to get that information to you. So I appreciate your patience. Thank you for those that uh, came to these sessions. You had great questions and comments, and uh, you came at it with a prayerful and thoughtful spirit, and I really appreciate that. I know of churches that are very much distressed, uh, but you came in a spirit of calmness, and uh, I certainly appreciate that, and I know that you do uh, of each other because you guys have been doing church for a long time together, haven't you? <laughs> So, so you know what it means to be the church together. So in these moments, let us have the Holy Spirit calm us and bring us into a place of prayer. Will you bow your heads with me? Holy Father, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose compassion illumines the world. Transform us into the likeness of the love of Christ, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Help us to share the risk and challenge of living our faith, 
And by your spirit, turn our fear to courage and our confusion to confidence, Sovereign Lord, Father of all, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant to us the strength to turn our face toward Jerusalem to bear our cross so that your glory and love and mercy may be revealed. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. And as Jesus taught us, so now we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite you as you are able to stand as we affirm our faith, reciting the Apostles' Creed. And we so confidently say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now. seated. Ushers, I'm going to have you come forward, and you are intelligent gentlemen. I'm going to put the offering plates right here if you'll pick those up while I get ready to do the offertory with these two gentlemen.
Let us stand. Praise God from Come and give us blessings that we might bless others. So bless these gifts, the giver and those that desire to give. For us in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's so awkward getting around. You've got to robe on and you're going between the piano so bear with me i'm going to use the podium for a change our scripture today comes from luke chapter 9 verses 28 through 43 it's on page 69 and 70 in the pew bibles now about eight days after these sayings jesus took with him peter john and james and went up to the mountain to pray and while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companion was weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Not knowing what he said, while he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice is spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days, told no one any of the things they had seen. Second passage, Jesus heals a boy with a demon, starts on verse 37. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks, and convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him with scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, you faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. When he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God.
seated. Mountains have a way of disarming you. There are people who choose to conquer certain mountains, uh, whether an item on their bucket list or simply a, a quest that meets a certain want or desire. The truth is, mountains can kill you. And perhaps there is a certain truth to that when it comes to the transfiguration. Mountains have a way of disrupting you. They change your framework, your way of seeing the world. Mountains don't lie. We long for mountaintops. We need them. But what is different in Luke's transfiguration account is the radical revelation of a mountaintop experience that is then interrupted by the urgency of reality. Luke reminds us that our proclamation of the good news will elicit real need. Are we ready to handle that? Are we ready to embody that? And from the mountaintop to the plain, there's a lot of terrain in between. There's a lot of terrain between mountaintop experiences and the trenches of real life, the highs and the lows of human existence. But the drastic change of scenery is seen after the transfiguration. Instead of solitude on the mountain, we have this great crowd. Instead of Elijah and Moses in glory, we have a distracted and distressed father and his epileptic child. And instead of a voice from heaven, we have the powerless disciples standing by whom Jesus had appointed and empowered to cast out demons and cure diseases. But these two pictures are meant to stand together. The one whom God approved on that mountaintop is the one who acts with power on the plain. So I, I see two principles at work here. First, oftentimes we as disciples stand helplessly by because we have failed to reach out to the hurting and the helpless. We spend our time looking for the right and the wrong and trying to proclaim a truth that is impotent. It is devoid of love of neighbor. 1 John 4 says God is love, and we love God because God first loved us. And if anyone says, I love God, and hates a brother or sister, he is a liar. Because the person who doesn't love a brother or sister, who can be seen, can't love God, who can't be seen. This commandment we have from him, those who claim to love God ought to love their brother and sister also. Being up on that mountain is glorious, it's transforming, but the transformation isn't meant to just be warm fuzzies. But the transformation is a call and a commission to come down to the plain and attend to the needs of those around us who are hurting and in need. The second principle I see at work here is this. Jesus came down off that mountain with his mission clearly in view. God spoke from heaven. This is my son, my chosen one. His very identity showed him his purpose and worth. It was not to stay on the mountain and be enshrined, but to go to the plain, to get his hands dirty, associating and ministering with the least, the last, and the lost, and lastly, suffering and dying for all. But on that mountain, Moses and Jesus began to speak about what the scripture calls Jesus' departure. In the Greek, it's the same word for exodus. Moses and Jesus speak about another exodus, a movement from slavery to freedom and liberation. Jesus' mission was one of freedom, it was calling all those who are weary and heavy laden. It was calling those who are outcast and marginalized. It was calling those who are labeled unlovable and unloved. It was calling those who are considered unclean 
because of their identity. It was calling all those who never found a place in life, who never found a place with the right crowd, the hapless, bumbling followers, sick children, distraught people. Jesus called all of them to come and find a, a place in his life of grace and freedom. The disciples on the mountain recognized Moses and Elijah. They recognized the monumental importance of them to their faith, but they forgot the overwhelming importance of the people on the plain. My friends, we can't see all the people with our heads in the pages. It's time to, as Fred Craddock, one of my favorite preachers, used to say, come down into the valley of service. So my friends, the events of this past week has not changed the mission of the church, no matter which way it did or could have gone. If anything, it has shown the ugliness and our willingness to fight about issues rather than talking and walking with each other. People from both sides came out battered and bruised and, and while we may see and talk about the familiar parts of our faith that we recognize and we hold dear, remember that God always transfigures and defines our faith in terms of the compelling mission to go into the world, to reach out to others with love and grace, compassion and mercy. We cannot enshrine our theology and doctrine and then call it a day. God always deals in surprises. And God's love always compels us to move toward the other every single time. So I believe that we should take a note from our text this morning from those disciples. The scripture says they were speechless. It's time for us to be speechless, to listen to pray, to shut off the noise of the voices that bolster our hardened convictions and listen instead for the still, small voice of the Spirit. The fact is, our church is like the despairing father with a sick son. We have been racked by division and strife and we want the touch of the gentle healer. And Jesus comes down from the mountaintop and is willing to gather us up and heal us and offer us back to the world to be the people who make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. This week I was, as I just want to throw this little story in here, this week I was talking with Zach, our administrative assistant. Uh, Zach really likes um, motocross. Uh, races with the, the motorbikes, and uh, I, was, I was at a restaurant uh, one day uh, late last week, and they had all these different uh, TVs on with different, you know, programs, and they had a motocross race going on, and I, I had some questions for Zach, and when I, I came back to the office, I, I asked him, I said, Zach, I noticed that, you know, they have all these, you know, uh, bumps and hills, they have to pop a wheelie on and get around, and there, there's like 20 of them racing around this little track. And, and I said, I noticed that when they would, when they would hit a, a hill and they'd pop up, they'd immediately turn their wheels and turn the bike downward. And I said, what was, what's that all about? And he said, well, that gets you back down to the ground quicker. He said, if you're up in the air, you're not going as fast as those that are on the ground. They're moving and they're getting ahead of you. So if you turn your wheel down, you get to the ground quicker and you get to go and keep your place easier. And I think for us as a church, Jesus is calling us to pop our wheels back down. We've been on a mountaintop. We may be in our heads about what, is hap what happens in our lives and in the life of our church. We may be stuck in this cloud of anxiety or fear or whatever, but it's time for us to pop our wheels back down, get back down to the plain, and reach out to those in our community because that has never changed. There are people that are still hurting, 
People are still going to line up for community lunch. People are still going to come to worship services. People are still going to be coming to the office and asking for help with medicine and, and other needs. People are still going to be walking beside you in grocery stores and where you work and within your family and friend circles. There are still going to be people in need, and it's time to pop your wheel back down, get back down into the race, and keep on going for Jesus. Amen? Amen. say together, God, you called Moses to lead your people out of slavery and a bush glowed. You gave Moses the law and his face glowed. Spirit, you sent Elijah home and the chariot glowed. Jesus, you brought Peter, James, and John up to the mountain and you glowed. Glow through us as we go through our valleys that others may see you and find the way. Amen. Crown him with many crowns. Thank you. 